There's several different reflexes that occur as it pertains to gastric secretion. The first of which is that a reflex occurs in the head. We refer to that as the cephalic reflex. And this is triggered by the smell, the taste, the sight, or just the thought of food. You can, you can imagine as you are thinking of something that tastes really good, your mouth starts to water. That's an example of the cephalic phase. The next phase is the gastric phase, which lasts about three to four hours, and it accounts for about two-thirds of the gastric juices that are released. And several different factors trigger this, the first of which is the distension, the stretching of receptors via the long and the short reflex, so a reflex that's within the stomach lining wall and then also one outside of the stomach. There's also chemical stimuli of partially digested proteins, caffeine, low acidity, things of that nature that are going to activate the enteroendocrine G cells to secrete gastrin to trigger a gastric secretion effect. There's also the release of gastrin then that initiates hydrochloric release from those parietal cells that we just talked about, and that activates the enzyme secretion. This prods more parietal cells to secrete hydrochloric acid. So it binds to receptors, it kind of causes, causes a, um, uh, a, a cycle of more and more is produced as needed so the proteins are broken down. So the regulation of this gastric secretion, there are, there's an inhibition of the gastric phase as well. So low pH would inhibit the gastric secretion. And that occurs between meals. There's also um, the more protein, the more hydrochloric acid is secreted. Uh, this is going to cause a decline in pH to inhibit gastric secretion because um, it's not needed anymore. This begins with a brief stimulatory effect component followed by inhibition. The stimulation of this phase, however, is that of partially digested food entering into the small intestine. This causes a brief release of gastrin as well, but it's the gastrin that's released in the small intestine from the enteroendocrine cells there. So the inhibition of the intestinal phase, there's four main factors in the duodenum that cause inhibition of these gastric secretions. First of which is the distension of the duodenum due to entry of the chyme. So stretching out of the duodenum, because there is chyme that's present there, and that inhibits gastric secretion because that chyme that's present in the duodenum has to be absorbed first. Presence of other types of chyme in the duodenum, like the like acidic chyme, for example, fatty chyme, or hypertonic chyme, do the same type of thing as well. So the inhibitory effects, they are going to protect the intestine from being overwhelmed by too much chyme or acidity. So basically, the duodenum has to absorb that digested chyme now into the tissues before more chyme can enter to go from the stomach into the small intestine. Now, the two ways in which this happens are via what's called the enterogastric reflex and also the hormones called the enterogastrones. So the enterogastric reflex happens when the duodenum inhibits acid secretion in the stomach by really short-term and long-term nerve reflexes. There's the enteric nerve uh, system short reflex, and there's also the long reflex, which is um, the autonomic nervous system. The enterogastrones then are hormones, which are the, the secretin, 
and the cholecystokinin, the CCK. So our next chart is going to show us the um, graphical representation of how this actually happens. And what we see at the top of this chart is the cephalic phase first. So we see uh, stimulatory events, um, just the idea of thinking about the food, the sight and smell of food. Notice it activates the parasympathetic nerve, which is the vagus nerve. Whereas inhibitory effects would be the opposite of that. Loss of appetite, depression, for example, decreased parasympathetic activity, or increased sympathetic activity. The next phase is the gastric phase, and the stimulatory effects are stretching of the stomach, distension of the stomach, and that activates the short and long-term reflexes. But also, food chemicals present can activate gastrin release directly into the blood from the G cells, whereas the inhibitory effects are just the exact opposite. Less gastrin released into the blood via the G cells. And again, the sympathetic nervous system can do this. So an excessive acidity lower than 2 would be an example of this, or extreme stress. Emotional stress can do this. The intestinal phase, then, is due to what's present in the duodenum, then. So if there's partially digested foods in the duodenum, this is going to stimulate the intestinal phase, causing enteric gastrin to be released into the blood, whereas the inhibitory effect would be the enterogastric reflex or the enterogastrones, the secretin and the cholecystokinin, basically causing a, a pause in that it, it tells the stomach, don't send any more chyme to the small intestine until we have fully absorbed it. So our next couple slides are a summary of the important hormones and paracrines that act in digestion and um, it's important for you to know the hormone, where it's produced from, what stimulates its production, and its activity. So just a couple that I want to highlight are CCK, cholecystokinin. It's secreted from the duodenal mucosa and it's released when there's fatty chyme that's present. Whereas um, secretin is an additional enterogastrone, also secreted from the duodenal mucosa, and acidic chyme is going to trigger its release instead of the fatty chyme, which we saw in the CCK. So the mechanism of action where hydrochloric acid is secreted by parietal cells is shown on this slide in just a little bit more detail. And so the parietal cells, they pump protons into the stomach lumen via this hydrogen potassium ATPase pump. So one of the treatments for acid reflux is a proton pump inhibitor. And the end result of this is that the hydrochloric acid produced from the parietal cell is going to activate the um, it's going to activate the pepsinogen into the pepsin. So our next slide shows us that there's the peristaltic, peristaltic waves that are now occurring in the stomach. These are the alternating contraction of that's, that's occurring and we first see peristalsis in number one on our slide, where peristaltic waves move from the fundus, the top part of the stomach, towards the pylorus. Then there is grinding that occurs, which is a more vigorous peristalsis mixing activity. And after that's occurred, then retro propulsion occurs where the chyme is moved backwards to further break it up. 
So what ends up happening is there's approximately three milliliters of chyme that's squirted into the duodenum with each wave. And there's pacemaker cells that are in the walls of the stomach that actually control this churning movement. So our final slide summarizes this activity. So we have the neural and hormonal factors that inhibit gastric emptying. So if we look a little more closely at this slide here, we can see that the presence of fatty, hypertonic, and acidic chyme in the duodenum all play a similar role, but it depends on what specifically is more prevalent. So the um, chemoreceptors and the stretch receptors, they are going to trigger the enterogastric reflex. Whereas the duodenal endocrine cells, they secrete the enterogastrins, the enterogastrones, the secretin, and the cholecystokinins.